Saturday, November 9th, West Virginia Championship Wrestling returns to Princeton, West Virginia with another huge television taping. Come out and see all the stars of West Virginia Championship Wrestling, including a special non-televised anything goes, no holds barred match between Hojo and J.C. Dykes Jr. Saturday night, November 9th, Princeton Rec Center. Be there. And we have in the first matchup, MC Dykes versus Danny Romero. Absolutely, Tony. And it's uh, really cool to see that we new faces just keep showing up here in WVCW. And, uh, we're, exactly. Uh, and look at this, MC Dykes right away going after Romero. Now, I, I've got to ask, you know, with a, look at the, take it right to Romero. With a name like MC Dykes, JC Dykes, is, is there a tie here, Jeff? You know, we're going to have to do some research on that and find out because uh, if he is – then that could dispel even more trouble for the roster at WVCW. Exactly, and it may be only a matter of time before he's part of that Lavelle's network. I certainly hope not. He's, he's using very Lavelle-like tactics with that choke in the corner. Exactly. He did honor the five count. I'll give him that. And Romero shoots him into the ropes. Good nice shoulder, shoulder block. block. Nice job. Then over. Blocks the hip toss. Reverses. Oh, a big hip toss. Wow. Nice reversal into a big hip toss of his own. You can tell it's a good hip toss when you put so much impact to it that it actually sends you to the floor as well. Exactly. Exactly. Romero giving him a taste of his own medicine. Oh. And when you drive a shoulder into somebody's uh, abdominal region like that, what that does is that actually pushes the air out of the body. Look at the force he just whipped him into the ropes with. Oh, wow. Huge running clothesline in the corner. Romero actually, looks stunned. He's actually got Romero stunned. That's what I was going to say. He's down to one knee, but he's quick to pick him up. Snapmare. Oh. Big kick right to the spine. Jeff. What does that do to somebody? Oh, he's going for a pin. Well, you were asking. Well, you have one count on that. You were asking me what that does. Well, that kick actually, that snap, what it does is it sends shock waves of pain throughout your body, and it actually has a temporary numbness. Effect. Oh. Wow. Huge belly to belly. Look at that impact. You could, you could feel that impact down here. I almost think that kick mail woke Romero up. Now, what is this that he's got him in here? That would be a single leg crab. And um, the, the difference between a single leg crab and a Boston crab, you're actually able to isolate that one leg. And, um, I mean, that's just going to send shockwaves through your whole your, your legs, your lower back, your spine. Very painful move. I, I, I can't even imagine. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's got to hurt. I mean, no doubt. Now, is, he, is it the same? Yeah, same leg. Very, oh. very smart to keep working on that same knee, though. Very oh, yeah. smart. Anytime you can turn a, uh, if you can take one wheel off of a car in a bank a bank chase, what happens? <laughs> well, bad things. Yeah. <laughs> so he's still working that knee over. Romero kind of stalk, sizing him up now. He gets Dykes back up. You know his gear does look a little like uh, J C Dykes. It, so. it truly does. Of course, I could also question: Has Romero been shopping at the Universal Heart Throb? Well, I, I was just going to say. And, oh, here we go, Romero trying to pump the crowd up. He, they're getting into it, and he's uh, up. No, that oh, did he not work. He that on him. No, it did not work at all. He's down to the mat. Kind of fell awkward on his lower back. Yep. Dykes just clubs on that back just to add impact to it. Snap suplex, and I tell you. At this point, the back's got to be feeling it pretty bad. Yeah, he kicks out at a two count. I would imagine so. I mean, these guys are very smart, though. You have Dykes that's focusing on Romero's back. Romero, in turn, focusing on the left knee of Dykes. A lot of strategy going into this. And this just goes to show the... Oh, look here. Look at the boot on the throat. Oh, man. Grabbing those ropes to kind of put even more leverage of that foot to the throat. Oh, absolutely. And what I was going to say is this actually just goes to show... The uh, level, these guys are both newcomers here, and they're putting it all on the line just to try to impress this WVCW nation and maybe move up the roster. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's oh, what. He's got him up. What is this? I don't know what he's going to do with him. He oh, wow. Drop. Nice. Go roll into the tag. He's got the leg hooked. Two oh. count. Two count. That was a close one. I was going to say, I mean, they both already impressed me. I, I think that they're making a strong argument uh, as it comes to looking at working up the ranks here at WVCW. He's kind of pulling him to the center of the ring now. Romero has got something in mind. He does. What's he's, this? He's going to the. He is going up top, Tony. He's up on. He's up on the second rope. He's looking at the crowd. He's going up to the top what rope. The he's up top. Maneuver? Are we going to I don't here? know. Could it be? 
kind of a kind of a knee drop to the like to a the reverse neck. knee drop. Yeah, I don't know that I've seen that. He rolls him over very slowly. Romero's got him covered. And he oh, kicks out at two and a Dykes half. Kicks out. I'm impressed. Yes, that takes a lot of stamina and strength to kick out after a move like that. I mean, he just had a knee dropped on his throat from about 12 feet in the air, and he kicked out. He he really may be related to J.C. Dykes. He, he could be. Oh, he's oh, rolling well, him up. For, he's rolling up for a pin. He's got him. Oh, that's a three count. The, win. the crowd not. Ha- what is this? Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the network. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, MC Dykes. What kind of what kind of display is this, Tony? Jeff, I don't know what's going on. Everything uh, just pandemonium is broken loose. And look here, we, they actually JC Dykes oh. does have his arm around this M- MC Dykes. Paranormal presents a public investigation of the Green Valley Volunteer Fire Department on Saturday, October 26th at 7 p.m. Who knows what mysteries lurk in the old firehouse? Tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for children. For more event information, look for us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Paranormal. You gotta be there to be scared. Make no mistake about it. WVCW, this is your heavyweight champion, the Iceman Scott Rains, coming to you. Come and tell you one thing. A lot of things are going to be different. You're going to start seeing a lot more of me coming up down the road. And all the naysayers and all the people that want to talk trash about me not being there enough, uh, not being a committed champion, not being a true champion, I'm going to prove them all wrong because I am a fighting champion. And if I've ever had a fire in me, it's never burned hotter than right now. I will see you next month, WVCW. I will be there. This title will be here. My fire, my heart, and my drive to desire to be the best that I could ever be. If I've ever been more driven, you guys, I'll see you soon. Wait to see what this champ does. And the pressure is being applied. Look at the expression on this man's face. Truly the wild man of professional wrestling, the wild man from Surrey of the Sheik. And I think it's all over. The referee is trying to break this up. He's trying to... JDAT Sports presents IWA Pro Wrestling Best of the 70s Volume 1. Available at www.vcientertainment.com or by calling 800-331-4077. Over three hours of wrestling action starring Dominic DiNucci, Ox Baker, Dick the Bruiser, The Big Cat, Ernie Ladd, Ivan Koloff, The Sheik, Mighty Igor, Mil Mascaris, plus a one-time main event, Jerry Lawler vs. Bobo Brazil. 20 great matches for $14.99. Call now at 800-331-4077 or www.vcientertainment.com. The crowd on their feet. Here we go. We have Johnny Smooth taking on Daniel Halen, who we just heard from. And joining me here at the table this week, none other than Jeff Griffith, the host of the Nerdy 30 podcast that you hear every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Well, thank you very much for that warm welcome, Eric. It was warm. I'm very honored to be here. It wasn't warm at all. Well, it was warmish. Yeah, <laughs> if you say so. And I'm really excited about this match that we're getting ready to see. Two guys that the crowd really seems to love with Daniel Halen and Johnny Smooth. And a matchup that we actually recently on the air speculated that we would like to see. Yeah, here we have Johnny Smooth right here. Definitely did not get a, uh, a good win. Uh, well, actually, he didn't win at all last <laughs> week. He, he lost 
to none other than Mr. Number One, George South, who, well, by the way, greatest, second greatest book ever written, Dad, You Don't Work at Wrestle, and second greatest television show by, brought to you by High Spots, next to Friends, Dad, You Don't Work at Wrestle. I was going to see if you were still uh, hanging on to that Friends at Number One position, but that's cool. Oh, oh a big shoulder block by Daniel Halen. And not to be deterred, Johnny Smooth grabs onto that side headlock. Sure does. Shoots the man off there to Daniel Halen. Daniel Halen with a big shoulder tackle goes down one. One count there by Johnny Smooth. Mm. Right back into a side headlock by Daniel Halen. Yeah, and this is a pace that I expect to really pick up as this match goes. And I mean, it's starting out this quick. Who knows how fast it could go? We know that both of these guys rely on a lot of speed and uh, technical wrestling in their repertoire. Sure, so we have Johnny Smooth here, just shoots Daniel Halen off into the turnbuck, comes in, big oh. smash, and he moves. Daniel Halen moved there at the last second as Johnny Smooth came in with a big splash and big clothesline there by Daniel Halen, knocking the man down, knocks him down once again. Daniel Halen trying to prove it to Kurt Taylor, who's not here this week, that he will win that best of seven. Big drop kick goes for the cover. One, two, no, one count, one count only by referee Cody Green. And you know, Eric, a match like this is only going to keep Daniel polished to be a part of that series. It's, it's like, you know, they say iron sharpens iron. Well, I believe that, you know, this is a match that's going to keep him completely on point. Yeah, and it's also, it's also a match that's going to keep me blown up from talking so much. <laughs> well, luckily you got me here to rely on. You can tag me in anytime you start getting tired, man. <laughs> I'll just leave then. You can finish. As we see here, Johnny Smooth thing it to Daniel Halen. All over the man there with a bunch of leg drops. Oh. Fakes the other one. Wow, and the crowd almost seemed to uh, kind of disapprove of that. Oh, goes goes big with that third one. One, two, two count there by referee Cody Green, who has joined us in these opening contests here on WVCW Television. Don't forget, if you ever miss an episode, you can catch us on WVCW TV on YouTube. Goes for the cover once again, Johnny Smooth. One, two, two count. Daniel Halen kicks out. Absolutely, and it's good you threw out those plugs because we want to make sure everybody has a you know chance to watch us no matter where they're at. Yeah, speaking of plugs, don't forget tonight at ten o'clock <laughs> you can watch the w, uh, you can listen to the Nerdy Thirty podcast on Blog Talk Radio. It is free to listen to. You can also join in in the chat room as we go for another cover one two. I'm not sure if they'll want to hear me again after listening to me all day today, but no, they probably they don't. Will. <laughs> hopefully, the producers of the show will kick you off and uh, not let you host that one. They they do that from time to time. And speaking of kicking off, Daniel Halen has kicked this crowd off as they're ready to roll. Sure have, as we see a couple big elbows there by Johnny Smooth. Daniel Halen was back into the turnbuckle, really kind of bewildered there, if you say. Mm -hmm. If kids say that word these days, uh, bewildered. The kids. I don't know what the kids are saying. <laughs> Younger people than us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Johnny Smooth going up to the second ropes. Always. Oh, no, he's going on up to higher altitudes. Always a risk. Wow. wow. It does not pay off. That was a nice come down with a nice elbow there that did not pay off. Big drop kick there by Daniel Halen. Goes for the cover, pulls the leg back. One, two. Still, no. still did not pull all of that weight onto the shoulders of Daniel of uh, Johnny Smooth as Daniel Halen here grabs him in a front face lock. Yeah, and Kind of slowing the pace of this match down a little bit. And that's the kind of move that will slowly wear on you. And I mean, it's a lot harder to climb up to those top ropes and try those high-flying moves if you're, you know, your stamina's took down. And he's switching transitions into a beautiful hammer lock there. Yeah, definitely right into a hammer lock after that big move and miss by Johnny, by, uh, Johnny Smooth. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Johnny Thunder, but we'll go with Johnny Smooth. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe you just gave him a second ring name. I don't well, know. Thunder, he's, he's yeah. pretty worked out. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it's a thunderous uh, uh, blow we saw him deliver there a moment ago when he flipped in. Oh, but no, it doesn't oh, matter. Oh, nice body slam there by Kurt Taylor after those double elbows right into the, the midsection. Now, Kurt Taylor's the one. That, I'm not, not Kurt Taylor. Daniel Halen is the one that looks like he's going up to the top rope. Will he hit this or will he miss? Oh! oh. Big clothesline to the chest. There he goes number it. one, two, two count there. And it looks as if Daniel Halen may actually have a split lip. Oh, it looks like he may be signaling for that spear. And what could be Daniel Halen thinking of now? Here we go. Goes for the spear and misses. Hits Johnny that smooth. middle turnbuckle. Turn around. Oh! 
beautiful maneuver. It looked almost yeah. like a jumping. Uh, a little bit of a rough rider right there. As yeah. You go. And two count because Daniel Halen grabbed that rope there. And Cody signaling for Actually, you know, I've just been told that was called the smooth move. The smooth move. Well, it was very smooth indeed. Smooth like silk. And he's got him into the hair. It looks, oh, but no, Daniel Halen reverses out. Oh! Oh, what a move by Daniel Halen. Good for the cover. One, two, no, two count. Daniel Johnny Halen. Smooth there grabs on to the, the uh, rope there. Yeah, he's lucky that rope was there. As I believe that maneuver could have been the end of the match. But uh, regardless, now he ducks under that clothesline and goes to the well once too often. Oh, he went to it and he just kind of on, hung on to his legs. Now, what's he going to try to do here? A Boston grab? Oh, no. Johnny Smooth, couple punches, rolls him oh. over. Could this be it? One, two, two, oh. two count. I thought that was it. What a match we're seeing here, Eric. Roll up. One, two, three. Yeah, there we go. That's win, it. Daniel. Fans, what a win by Daniel Halen. What a win. I, I can't believe he just got that and just he just sent a message to Kurt Taylor saying that he's going to take him up on that best of seven. Match two will happen shortly. And now let's go to some footage of what you received. <laughs> Of course, I Bone took off up to uh, West Virginia, West Virginia Championship Wrestling, but bullet, they do things right. There was actually a grown man there videotaping with his camera. I actually put the goof in the crowd that was filming the TVs to be put on YouTube before it's time for them to be shown. Bullet! That's exactly what it says in that That's exactly what it says. <laughs> Appalachian Paranormal will be giving a paranormal tour of downtown historic Hinton, West Virginia on Saturday, November 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for children. For more event information, visit facebook.com slash Appalachian Paranormal. Appalachian Paranormal would like to wish you and your family a very safe and happy Halloween. I introduce to you these great series of matches. It's called The Best of the 80s, Volume 1, from Southwest Championship Wrestling. Some of the best wrestling there ever was during the 80s. Some of the best wrestling ever. <laughs> Another match on this great card that we're having tonight in War, West Virginia. Well, we got Frank the Tank Parker taking on Eric St. Clair. <laughs> and we have, just just so you know, we have a series of chuckers going through town honking a hello. And uh, we're ready to go back to war here with Eric St. Clair sporting the Steelers trunks. I have to say, I do love that. As, as a Steelers fan, I'm sure you appreciate that. I really Tony. do. And then, and then uh, Frank the Tank Parker, this should be a good matchup. And I I gotta say, the, this unique atmosphere that we love so much here in War West Virginia with these matches, where else are you gonna have a match with literally coal trucks going by honking their horns? It, it's a really awesome thing to see. It is, it is. I mean, Jeff, the, and another thing just to make note, the crowd has gotten bigger as the night has went on. I mean, they love wrestling here in War. It's a, it's a part of the culture and heritage and, and everyone grows up being wrestling fans. And they've continued that tradition 
And they're ready for uh, Parker and St. Clair to lock it up here. Yeah, uh, Frank the Tank Parker's a guy that we haven't saw in a long time, Tony. And uh, I, can, I can attest to the fact that he's a very powerful, very hard-hitting worker. And um, going in there against Eric St. Clair, this, is, this should be a very classic, um, just well-fought match. Oh, look, the both men just canceled each other out off the ropes right there. Oh, yeah. St. Clair just staring him down. That was the, that was the, uh, the, the unstoppable force hitting the immovable object. Yes, so it speak. was. Yes, it was. St. Clair definitely has the fans behind him right now. Well, we are in Steelers country, Tony, so I'm sure that has to do I'm glad you said that. I didn't have to. Thank you, Jeff. That's a fact. That's a known fact. Hey, the children actually at ringside are, are mocking uh, the tank up here. This kind of kind of give him a hard time as the match goes on. Uh, is, he may be asking for the children to be removed from ringside. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think the refs are going to uh, uh, acquiesce to that. No. But um, I, I must say, these kids better be careful because Frank Parker looks like the kind of guy that wouldn't put up with much nonsense, even if it is from a child. E exactly. And let me tell you something. If one of these guys goes over that top rope, <laughs> those kids better move back. So they're locked up in center ring now. And look at this. Neither guy can really get in the man. Frank Parker finally does power St. Clair back into the corner. Taking advantage of the – gets the – oh, he tries to go for the punch at the four count. Eric St. Clair lands a big blow to Frank Parker, sends it back, reeling back into the corner. And Frank Parker kind of checking his head, making sure there's no blood. I'll tell you what, the punt, the sound from that punch, it's a wonder that it didn't bring some blood. And these children really seem to be getting under Parker's skin. Oh, they really are. And, and you got to wonder, you know, with concentration, is he concentrating hard enough on this match, well, or are they going to be a distraction for him? I mean, when you're facing a former WVCW heavyweight champion, you can't have any distractions. No. So you have to be able to fight through those distractions. And, uh, you know, St. Clair has him wrapped up. It looks like Parker's breaking the hold. Nice right. reversal. Beautiful go behind reversal. And look at this. We got St. Clair trying. Now St. Clair is reversing that into an arm bar. Arm bar. Nice. Parker has to take a knee to try to relieve pressure. He's twisting, wrenching that arm, Jeff. Frank Parker's in a lot of pain. You can tell. It kind of looked like St. Clair was enjoying that. It, it twisted into a hammer lock, which might only add to the pressure that he's feeling. Right. No. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. He's just kind of parading him around the ring with that. With that arm bar. And I'll tell you what I noticed. St. Clair actually had the palm there with, uh, between his fingers where he could twist it back, adding extra pressure into the nerves and the wrist. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's the thing. Uh, people don't realize that does a lot of damage to your arm, your shoulder, your wrist, your fingers, your hand. Mm -hmm. It can do a lot of damage to you the, the longer you're kept in a hold like that. But Parker's battling back right away. Parker throwing some wild blows and, and using an illegal choke in the corner. Getting in the face of the referee won't help him out. He needs to, like you said, focus on St. Clair. You have a, a world-class opponent in the corner. you got to keep an eye on him. Absolutely. And a man who we will say that um, he, he may have a few distractions of his own, Tony. Let's be honest. That's true. St. Clair, after finding out what we found out earlier with the revelation of how uh, it makes me sick to even say it. I know. With the revelation of William Lavelle and knowing, having a face to his enemy, and it's a man that he's trusted for years. Yeah, that's got to make it even worse. It's someone that you think you know, someone you thought you know really well, and, and you know, I don't know. I'm still at still a loss over the whole situation. Yeah, and I, like I said, I just have to wonder how that plays into this match and the mindset of Eric St. Clair. And plus, he's got to be worried about his friend Hojo, who just took a fireball to the face. That's true. I big mean, big elbow smash to the head since St. Clair down on his knees, Jeff. He's being pummeled in the corner right now by Parker. And then and putting St. Clair's face right in the right there with those children that are cheering for him. Almost like he's trying to mock them. I think that's exactly what he's doing. He's just trying to oh. literally rub it in. And Parker doing a little dance. I don't even know what to call that move. Was that the Watusi? It may have been, Jeff, but look, St. Clair battling back to series two punches to the midsection. Eric St. Clair says, so you think you can oh, dance, and, and a, starts throwing the punches. A big shot upstairs sends Parker down on his back, a two count, and he kicks out. Both men up quickly. These guys are moving wow. very quick for two big guys in the, the ring. Two big guys are displaying terrific stamina already. 
Parker stalking St. Clair over in the corner. And, and is he biting him? He's biting him. He's right biting him in the top of the Jeffrey's head. Jeffrey's got to get in there and do something about that. I did not expect to see that coming, but that's actually what happened. And now he's and now choking he's again, choking St. Clair in the corner. What If this guy was a wrestler in a video game, his creative wrestler moveset would just be rule breaker number two. Yes. He's going for all heel, yeah. heel, very heelish type maneuvers. Exactly. Here. St. Clair fights back with a couple kicks to the midsection as Parker doubled over. Oh, right back to that bite. I think he bit his ear, Jeff. I think a la Mike Tyson of Vander Holyfield. I hope it's all there. I couldn't tell, but it looked like he bit St. Clair right in the ear. You know, well, we got to remember, Eric St. Clair is only, always only one iron claw away from a victory. That's true. He just got smashed into the corner, and he's down, Jeff. He's down on his back as Parker celebrates. Frank Parker slicing his finger across his throat as if to say it's over. Two counts. St. Clair, St. Clair kicks, kicks out. out. He's a referee explaining, you know, he got the two. And that's what happened. And St. Clair really just starting to show the effects of the beating that he's took through this match, as anybody would. Oh, yeah. I mean, punishment like this for this amount of time, it's uh, – it, it, it Just look at the muscles on Frank Park. You can see the size of his arms, his shoulders. That kind of strength just wrenching back on your neck with a knee to your shoulder blades. It's, it's – I don't know how anybody gets up from that. He follows it with a brutal stomp. Looks like a size 28 shoe there. <laughs> it does. It sure does. That's what I was going to ask you. What do you think the size of that boot is? Oh. It's a huge boot, but then comes down right on the forehead with a knee. Right. That's a boot connected to that hard knee that just came across his head. Parker looking very pleased with himself right now. Yes, he is. He's telling everybody, look, here's a one, two, three. Well, let's find out. Oh, kicks oh, out at two. I thought that was it. St. Clair kicks out at two. He asks the referee, what do I got to do? What does he got to do, Jeff, to – to finish off someone like St. Clair. Tony, I don't even know. And St. Clair got the energy left to fight back in this one. Pushed back into the corner. Three kicks. St. Clair, look at the way his shoulders are just slumping. Yeah, he, he's slumping now, Jeff. He's got to call upon something uh, here for some strength. Now, and he moves just in time. The, he found the strength to move. Parker hit and he's got his up. hand in the air, Jeff, and the claw is initiated. Claw. The claw is locked in. And Frank Parker's struggling. I got to think Parker's probably made his match here. He's got the claw. It's still, still locked look, in. Look, he's fighting. He's down to his wobbling. knees. Arms going down. Oh, he's down to both knees now, Tony. The arm dropped once, Jeff. There's two. Second drop. That claw is still. What is it? What is this? J.C. Dykes Jr., Chris uh, Keffer are out at ringside. I thought I smelled garbage. J just in the moment, literally, when it looked like victory was in his grasp, oh, they've taken that away and, from St. Clair. And look who we've got else at ringside. It's William Lavelle. William Lavelle comes in with powder to the face of St. Oh, Clair. Jeff, goodness. he's rolled up. The referee has no idea. Parker gets a three count after William Lavelle comes in with his powdery substance and sends St. Clair down. Oh, my goodness. I'm disgusted, Jeff, at what we're seeing. Is, is this change? Is this change for the good? It's change, Tony, but I don't know that it's the kind of change any of us want to see. I'm disgusted. <laughs>